We're here to talk about Donald Trump's move to reverse uh, the Obama administration's Title IX guidance around transgender rights. And I think probably most of our viewers uh, have some familiarity with what, what the Title IX guidance was, but can you walk them through kind of what the elements of it were? Yeah, absolutely. So first I should say what Title IX is, because a lot of people think it's about school sports and allowing there to be girls' teams in high school and in, you know, in women's teams in college, and it is that, but it's a lot more than that. It's basically the the federal law that outlaws sex discrimination in education in the United States from K through grad school. Uh, and it covers everything from whether or not you can be admitted to how you move about in the schools. So uh, the Department of Education has has reminded colleges that it includes sexual assault. If you don't properly investigate sexual assaults, you could be liable for Title IX. So transgender people are covered by Title IX in education, not because of the guidance that was taken away on Wednesday, but because just clearly, if you discriminate against a transgender person, it's because of their sex. It's because you think they're a man or a woman, or you don't believe they're a man or a woman, or you think they're too much of a man or not enough of a man or whatever. It's about sex. So last year, after decades of the courts building up this case law that says trans people are covered, the school principals and administrators went to the Department of Education and said, hey, can you help us figure out how to deal with all these transgender students we have now? And the Department of Education did some guidance, which says, hey, if you want to avoid Title IX problems and you want to educate kids, treat transgender people according to their gender identity. And then here's some useful suggest suggestions based on best practices around the country on how to do it. Here's some information about how to deal with bathrooms. Here's some information about how to deal with what name you call the student, confidentiality of health records, um, all sorts of things that would matter to a student. Inexplicably, some extremists have decided to make transgender people in the bathroom into a national conversation. And the attorney general the president and the secretary of education decided to throw some red meat to their base by taking back the guidance from trans people. Uh, TYT was actually on the ground when you were arrested in North Carolina, which became kind of the, the, the flashpoint for this. What was the difference in, uh, in North Carolina, practically speaking, for trans people after that law was passed? Well, I think schools in North Carolina were all treading very carefully and trying to be as respectful as they could be of trans people because they weren't sure what was happening and they didn't want to lose their federal funding. Um, now we're really worried about how they're going to be. We, we'll be sending them letters along with some of the LGBT legal groups saying, you're still obligated to um, enforce Title IX. You're still obligated to educate these students respectfully. And if you don't, we'll sue you. Uh, so we, we're hoping they'll all be, behave, but we, we really don't know that yet. When uh, HB2 was passed in North Carolina, kids were really scared, and young adults who were students were really scared. I, I even know a guy who's, I think, was 58 years old, gone back to college, where technically HB2 would have been enforced, though they never enforced it. And he would drive to school, sit in his car until class time, then get out and go to class, and then come right back to his car and go away so that he didn't have to risk going to the bathroom. It's not useful to anybody, um, but they've scared people. And, um, you know, President Trump and Secretary DeVos and Attorney General Sessions have um, terrified a lot of people and their parents. What, what kind of legal discrimination would uh, your organization need in order to take a case to court? Well, I should say we don't actually take cases to court, but we work closely with right. groups like the ACLU, Lambda Legal, and, and National Center for Lesbian Rights, and, and some others. Um, uh, and, and I'm not an attorney, so I don't, I don't want to say exactly, other than to say if a trans kid can't go to school, um, or if a trans kid has to go to school under conditions that are just illegal and immoral. Because right, it's not just bathrooms, we're talking about dorms here and other situations too. Yeah, and what we're also talking about, um, you know, whether or not um, administrators will tell other kids that there's a transgender person in school and violate their privacy. We're also talking about whether or not um, students will be allowed to use their real name as opposed to the name the school thinks they should use. We're talking about whether sex-specific programs will be available to um, to trans students. You know, I heard a really horrible story just a half an hour ago about a 12-year-old who was fine in school, the school was doing everything right, and he went to school yesterday after uh, 
the president did this. And the school said, yeah, I'm sorry, we're not going to let you use the bathrooms anymore. You don't get to be a boy in gym class anymore. Um, for all of our purposes now, we're reverting back to your girl name. And it doesn't benefit anybody. I mean, it's just sort of mind boggling. And I don't know yet if this school is being um, horrible people or if they're just confused by what the federal government did and think they have to do that.